now I have to be really careful with what I say. <laughs> yes, you because do. Because now it's, it's being recorded. All right. We're going live. Three, two, one. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> Oh my goodness, here we are, boys and girls. Welcome, everybody, to episode 145 of Third Shift. This is, of course, a very special episode for many, many reasons. First off, we've got three people here. Wow, that's amazing. There's three of us here. This is crazy. Exactly, Matt. (laughs) Which I'll introduce him in a minute, guys. He doesn't really exist yet until I introduce him, because that's the way this is supposed to go. So, (laughs) anywho... It's also special because, hey, we're in front of you on Twitch, which means this is live on the fives, everybody. Ooh, we live on the fives. And lastly, it is our E3 hoo-ha special where we just talk about stupid things about E3, what we hope, whatever, doesn't really matter. We're not professionals. We get to do whatever we want and say stupid things. So without further ado, today joining me is the inglorious bastard himself, Mr. Matt. Yes, hello. Look at it, how he can talk. And the audio monkey, Miss Danny. <laughs> audio monkey, all right, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get going, you boys and girls know what we got to do. We got to talk a little bit about our weeks. Not a whole bunch, but a little bit, because no, that's how we do it. it's going to be a whole bunch. I'm trying, I'm trying to, no, 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 you I can't, was trying. You can't control I was trying. me. I am live oh on God. the five, son. <laughs> Oh, you thought man. it was bad in audio format. Wait until I get rolling in video. Oh, Great. baby. Well, without further ado, Danny, how was your week? What'd you do? Uh, yeah. it, was, it was okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just been work, and I've been cramming for this live stream because I don't follow games as closely as you guys do. So mm. I got all nerdly on E3, and it, it was fun because I remembered a lot of games that I forgot about. Yeah, really. Other than that, I've been I've been painting, but no one can see it yet. <laughs> So you're cheating on your live streams. You can be like, hey, guys, I look am. at all the progress I made. The whole thing's done. <laughs> anyway, join me no, next time I, when I'm going to start something else. <laughs> I haven't been, been painting that one. It's it's still where it was last time. Okay. Fantastic. But I've been working on two other things, and uh, someday they will be revealed, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, I've been playing Borderlands 2 some more. Mm. Um, yeah, that's really all I've been doing. So, uh, how about you, Matt? How's your week been? (laughs) Oh, yeah, I got all the stories. But first of all, you all noticed, because you're always here live on the fives with me, you notice the camera is in a different position. You get to see more of the door. You get to see the door knob. It's a fabulous You get to see it turn creepily (laughs) behind me, and you get to watch it creak open and like an arm snake through. The day that happens, I will rejoice. I will I will, too. I'll just be like, here it is. (laughs) Here it is. Time for bye-bye. Yeah. But my week has been, you know, it was the same kind of week it was last week. Work as hell, you know how it is. But on the good note, went and saw two movies this week. Went and saw Detective Pikachu, which was, I mean, I'm not a Pokemon guy, but it was a pretty good movie, pretty enjoyable. Ryan Reynolds was the the main part of seeing that, his little wisecracks, his little actions. He was really good. Aside from that, it was a kid's movie, which I guess I should have known, but the previews don't make it look like a kid's movie. So, like, outside of any scenes with him where it was just... The kid, when I describe him as a kid, so he's a kid. It's like, oh, well, I'm watching a, just a, a kid's movie. And they're like, oh, man, how are we going to figure that out? Here's how you figure it out. Oh, I wonder who the bad guy is. Here he is. Oh, okay. That's, that's neat. But like I said, Ryan Reynolds is really good in it. He was, I mean... He's wisecracking, making comments. A lot of stuff, like at the very end of a scene, like they're walking away and he's, it'll have some really good line right before the scene cuts that not like a bunch of kids would get, but like an adult would get. I'm like, ah, okay, cool. That was cool. On the other movie front, went and saw Godzilla, King of the Monsters. If you like monsters punching each other, this is the movie for you. I love watching Godzilla just kick butt and atomic breath, all that stuff. It's good stuff. If you want a super deep plot, get out of here. It's Godzilla. Now, so I got to ask fun. because I've seen every Godzilla movie there is. I've mm-hmm. seen them, all the ones, obviously, since I've been able to go to the theater and see them, seen them in the theater. Right. And every one of them disappoints me. 
Mm. Is this one going to disappoint me? Or is this one actually monsters fighting monsters going to town? Or is it 50 frickin' minutes of set up and, oh my god, raw, and then the, like a raw, and then a smoke, and then no monster? <laughs> no, it, it's definitely not the last Godzilla movie. Okay. Where it was Jeez, like, oh man, dude. something's happening. Ooh, cut. Here's humans for 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's human stories, but. No, that's fine. It's, it starts, what's going on? Action scene. Okay, whoop, Godzilla awoke. Oh, he, King Ghidra's flying around. Oh, monsters popping up. So it's definitely, you get more monster for your buck than you did last time. Outstanding. All right, I might go see it then. Oh, I was hoping I could just finally let go of Godzilla as a bad thing and just forget <laughs> about it. But No, I'd, I'd say this one's worth a watch. This one's good I mean, to go? Okay. It's it's not as human centric. I think some of the human subplots are done better than others, but uh-huh. there's like one good one with uh, Ken Watanabe, the Japanese guy, Which and Godzilla. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, he's awesome. So, yeah, I enjoyed that part. And then there's monsters punching each other and shooting beams. It's it's good yeah. stuff. Sweet. Then on the video game front, been playing Touch My Katamari on my PS Vita, having a lot of fun with that. It's Katamari. I love Katamari. That's that's all there is to it. Also been playing Steins Gate Elite a lot because I'm not nearly as far into that game as I should be considering the amount of hours I'm in, and that's always fun. Like I, I love that series. I know all about it, but just playing through it again, it's so cool. But then also like there's a character that becomes evil, so watching that character like worm its way into the group and like like there's little, little hints and teases but the main characters like miss it and i'm like no 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 that's uh, you can't no oh why did you say mm. so it's it's cool to to know the outcome and then see how well well or poorly it's handled all the way through so that's been a lot of fun and it's real life story time i had an earth defense force moment today everyone's gonna love this story <laughs> Went out to my mailbox, and I don't get, like, mail. Like, I get bill. Not, not even, I don't even get bills. I just get, hey, look, check out this thing from a company that I'm associated with. Or, you know, I get the flyers and stuff. I don't get, like, mail from people or people, things I care about. So I check my mailbox, like, once a month. So I checked it, like, a month and a half ago or whatever. Went out there today. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have, like, a month's worth of the stupid coupon flyer things. Pull it open. Sure enough, there's a whole bunch of crap in there. Reach in, and I go... That doesn't feel right. I took my hand out. There were like the biggest black spider, not not spiders, the biggest black ants I've ever seen, just like roiling and crawling all over oh. everything in there. And I went, oh, that's new. So I grabbed a thing, shook it off, threw it on the floor, grabbed another thing, shook it off, threw it on the ground, got it empty, looked in the back, and it was just like a ball of ants just going like this. I was Boring. like, they're like... Big and like thick, like fat uh-huh. black ants. Oh my like God. they looked like they were like armored muscle ants. And I was like, <laughs> okay, coop, 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 coop. see you guys in a month. <laughs> Took the crap inside because I, I don't care. I don't get my mail. What does it matter? You can just stop delivering mail to me. I won't care. But yeah, that was it was <laughs> it was awesome. Just reaching in, feeling there's a whole bunch of stuff moving under my hand. It was an uh-huh. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom moment. Just. What's in there? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Ah, no. Ah. no. <laughs> it was great. I don't like ants. I don't like ants. You know, I don't fear them, but, yeah, I would not have. I would have reacted by destroying probably the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I will say I, I reacted this about the same to I don't like bugs inside like, I hate ants in my house, uh-huh. which has happened, like, once or twice. I hate spiders in my house. But if I see bugs outside, it's just like, ugh, just don't touch me. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I saw the ball in the back of the mailbox, I went, oh, well, they'll get the message. I'm a thing who comes in. They'll see somebody open it and put shit in it every day. Oh, well, they'll either be there or they won't. They'll leave eventually. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, they would bother me if they were in here right now. Walking yeah. around, but like animals and bugs outside, I'm just like, just just don't be all over my skin. That's all. Uh, that's all. Yeah, be everywhere. Ugh. God, <laughs> disgusting. So, what about you, Eric? How was your week this week? My week was great. You know what? I also went and saw Detective Pikachu this weekend with the daughters. Went out nice. and took the little monkeys there. I set them in a little row. We got them popcorn, pop, gummy bears, all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. They watched it. 
awesome. They did exactly what they're supposed to do. They sat quietly, watched the film. We all giggled good. and we laughed. Yep. Because I have children who can behave for a short amount of time. You know, it's good stuff. And you know how to discipline them if they if don't. If they don't, exactly. <laughs> yep. Good. So we had Thank fun. You. So there's, there's two good kids left in this universe. <laughs> They're here. They exist. They required a couple spankings, but you know, along the way. Yeah, but that's how that you happens. get them where they are. And if you don't agree with that, that's fine. Live your life how you want to live. I don't judge. I don't care. Enjoy. Leave a comment in the comment box. There you below. go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, so we did that. Had a fantastic time. I I I understood that it was going to be more kitty, like you were saying, because I yeah. went and read a couple reviews and whatnot about it, and was like, okay, I know what I'm getting into. But since I had them and they were super excited about it, I said, what the heck, you know? I used to watch Pokemon when I was little, and so mm. it was fun. I, I enjoyed myself, but like you said, it really was a kid show at heart. Yeah. I mean, it, every point was just given to you, handed to you. I yeah. felt uh, I felt that Ryan Reynolds did a fantastic job. I thought the Pokemon in the world looked fantastic. I thought it was just mm-hmm. really cool, a, a nice spectacle. But I felt like the um, the whole scenario with the the main character boy and the girl was t- mm-hmm. it's not that great. I thought I thought so, she was actually she, terrible. She was terrible. Yeah. He was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but she was terrible. And so anything with both of them going, it was yeah. really bad. And it really hurt my feelings because, you know, like I said, the Pikachu with Ron Reynolds' voice performed way better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, a CG thing is creating more emotions and connections than a human with a human. And I was like, exactly. oh, that's not good. So hopefully she goes, and you know, she's young, yeah, hopefully yeah. goes, learns from that, gets some more chops under her and progresses. But either way, it was fun. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad I got to take the kids. I promised them I'd go. And it was like that thing where the weeks kept going by and camp out here, <laughs> cabin yeah. there, soccer here, Girl Scouts there. And I'm like, so I'm almost to the point where I'm going to lie to them because mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. Because time just got away, not because you meant to just. No. <laughs> yeah, sure. Exactly. It just it was one thing after another. And, you know, and I only got so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. So we got it. Whew. Still haven't lied. I'm a good. I'm a good dad. <laughs> the only thing that was sucked was uh, when the movie first came out. They were promising like a little, you know, a little three pack of yeah uh, Pokemon yeah. cards. And she would heard from a friend oh. at school that oh, you go see Pokemon, they give you Pokemon cards. So she was like, uh, uh, "Where's my Pokemon cards?" And I'm like, "I think that's all over." We saw it too late, you know. It's mm. that the uh, you know she was sad about that. So I just went to the dollar store and got her. Uh, for a dollar, three little Pokemon cards. <laughs> there you go. Here you go. There's three Pokemon cards. You got them. Everything as promised. It's okay. There we go. And I will say, like I said, I'm not a Pokemon guy, but when I saw that promo, I was like, oh, I got to go see that open week opening weekend. Anytime the theater says, you get a free thing with your ticket, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Hey, give me that thing. Give me, give me, give me, give me. What, give what me, should me. I do? Just throw it in a drawer? Yeah, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I got it. That's my That's free right. thing. Indeed. I hear you. <laughs> So besides that, I played a bunch of video games, which I've talked about on IG2G. I've talked about on What You're Playing Third Shift. So I won't say much on it here, except for that I'm still playing video games. I still got a ton of video games to play, and I will be downloading Borderlands 2 again tonight because there's mm-hmm. some cool things happening soon, which we'll talk about. And yeah, and hey, this weekend I'll be camping my first big big camp out of the year. You know, more in like four or five days. So I'll be able to tell you guys all about that next week, along with all the wonderful E3 stuff. So until then, that's it for me. It's been a pretty breezy, easy week, and that's about it. So that's us individually this week. Together as a team this week, we did absolutely nothing. We did record What You Play in Third Shift. That's not up yet at patreon.com slash thirdshiftme for the $3 tier. But that will be going up at least tomorrow, if not over the weekend. Hey, I'm a busy man. What can I tell you? But I can tell you. That next week on Tuesday, we'll be dropping IG2G episode 55. All kinds of good stuff has been coming out, like sneak releases. Like, I'm like, oh, man, when's that coming out? Oh, now. Okay, cool. So we'll be talking about good stuff on that episode for you. Yep. Can't wait for that. There's been several few several few games. Several (laughs) few games. There's a couple (laughs) many games out there. A couple many. (laughs) Perhaps. Some a lot games. I don't know. <laughs> there are a lot of games out, and a couple of them I want to talk about. So yeah. the next IG2G shall be fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. And, of course, what else is fantastic? My favorite part of the show, here it comes. We got Chef Codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, and... 
Do we have shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands Game of the Year Edition, Danny? No, we don't. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> well, hit up the Twitter, the Red, the forums, the Instagram. Hit up your preferred shift code provider and get yourself some free loot. You're going to be needing some free loot in that game. Not specifically that one, but for the hands of collection. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. You just need those golden keys to get that yeah. beautiful loot. And mm-hmm. yeah, Randy Pitchford's been a busy little boy, so no, we haven't seen those wonderful keys dropping for the Game of the Year edition lately because he's usually been the one to drop them. Mm-hmm. But he has got a lot on his plate, I think. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great, of course. And we're going to talk about it in just a second. And another thing we're going to talk about in just a second, which is right now, speaking of codes and things and inputting codes into things, Danny knows more about this than me because I still haven't set it up because my shift code, my shift account is all screwed up. <laughs> Borderlands VIP Season 1 is here. There are all kinds of codes you can put in to get points. They actually have unlocks now for like Borderlands 3 skins and heads and things. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen it yet because, again, my stuff's all screwed up. So go take it away, you two. You could do it. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so you can do a lot of activities to earn points. You can watch videos. You can read articles. Uh, today you could take a survey. Both yeah. surveys. <laughs> I love clicking strongly disagree. Those are my favorite. <laughs> strongly disagree. No I, opinion. I did that somewhere else recently. No <laughs> opinion's always my favorite. No Whoa. opinion. No opinion. No opinion. No opinion. <laughs> Straight down the middle. <laughs> I just wasted your life with my no opinions. Yes. Do you like hope or despair? No opinion. No opinion. <laughs> Do, would you rather be alive or dead? No, no opinion. opinion. That's no opinion. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no. So there's a lot of things you can do to earn points that, that you can then redeem for in-game stuff. You can get desktop or uh, mobile backgrounds for your phone if you wanted. I'm interested to see where they go with this. It's kind of underwhelming at the moment just because I'm not like totally into Borderlands right now, but I think it'll be more fun once I get into Borderlands 3, and I'm sure the seasons will get more and more exciting as we go along. Mm. Well, and right now you're prepping for Borderlands 3, though. You know, they're offering... Sure. You know, you get enough points, they're offering the cool little keychains already, the VIP keychains for your uh, Borderlands 3 character, things like that, grenade mm-hmm. mods, skins, all that good stuff. And who yeah. doesn't like good skins? So yeah. the way they're going with it, I appreciate, I enjoy it. And like you said, you just do all sorts of weird, s- silly things and you get points. Mm-hmm. Like go to their Twitter page, you just click the link, which yep. links you right to Twitter, boom, 250 points. It's not that difficult to go get nice. a couple thousand points and... Five, ten minutes of just checking things out. And you're going to want it anyway because, you know, they post new information, new stuff. And you get to be up to date. Obviously, we're up to date because we're just constantly following everybody that exists in Gearbox World. So we yeah. just see it Trying all on to. the Twitter feeds and whatnot. <laughs> but as you were saying, you can redeem codes as well that get you bonus points on top of that. And right now mm. they got like a BL3 welcome code you can yep. pop into the redeem code on your insider thing which wasn't there and then danny was like crying and whining about it saying she couldn't find it, <laughs> it which there. it was there you had to well you had to it do was, it originally it was, buried. It, was, it was buried you had to go to the insider <laughs> activities scroll down it was one of the boxes on the left hand side on the bottom that said yeah. redeem code it was that's exactly four too it many was clicks. too many you're yeah. no you're 100 like, percent right i'm out it was it was too much when the VIP first came out, it had a link in the menu where you could click redeem code, and mm-hmm. it just disappeared. And now it's suddenly back with the season. Came so. back, <laughs> yes. So they saw Danny go, help me. Help me. And they brought it yeah. back. So now, everybody, you just click redeem code, check your email, and you should have the one that says BL3 welcome. And then I also saw Mental Mars post one that said Joy Puke. You can pop mm-hmm. that one in for 250 points or something like that as well. So you just... Pay attention to those, check your emails, read what they're talking about, click on the little codes. You're getting points all day long, getting skins for Borderlands 3, getting mods, and apparently there's a bunch of people, I haven't gone and looked, I was going to do it before we got on, but I ran out of time. There's something going on where like everyone's like, oh, I got a Norfleet, oh, I got a Hellfire, Mellow on Hellfire, so I don't know if that mm-hmm. was just for funsies or if they're actually unlocking these legendaries or what's going on here. They are. There's a uh, thing you can click on, and it will shuffle through a bunch of weapons, and you get one free gun. Wow. So you get one yeah. free legendary, it sounds like, because mm-hmm. most of them are pulling up legendary. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. So you could start the game with a tiny little head start, have some fun with a crazy cool gun. Right. Now, one, one thing about that, too, is I think it also can unlock 
Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel legendaries. Because uh. I was listening to a video about this from one of the guys we follow on the show. I, I wish I had his, his Twitter pulled up because I would give him a plug. But it's a British dude, little small you know, YouTuber we follow and he was going through, you know, clicking all the new things. And it's like, yeah, like Danny said, it's a little weapon wheel and there were legendaries from two and pre-sequel. I don't know if he said three yet. Okay. So, just two and pre-sequel. so maybe it was okay. just for current ones. Okay. So basically a yeah. free legendary yeah. in current Borlands. Mm-hmm. All right. But I'm sure eventually it'll be yeah. a switch three. over. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure on that. Cause I know a lot of the legendaries are returning for three. So I just assumed it was you're just getting prepped for three, and they were going to give you something of that since all the other stuff is Borderlands three related. But apparently not. It is for two. That's, and a, that's a little too good, though. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it, it really is. If I started yeah. with a Mallow on Hellfire, I mean, pfft. yeah. Well, I mean, it, and it starts at your level though. Whenever you redeem it, so you got to be careful yeah. about that too. Uh-huh. Um, but the other thing was if you collect eight guns through the VIP system, you get a legendary... Oh my god, I can't remember which one it was, but you get a legendary for Borderlands 3. Oh, nice. So, so you can start <laughs> earning your way towards yes. guaranteed legendaries in BL3. Yes. BDL3, sorry. I, I don't know why. <laughs> they poisoned my brain. BL3 is wrong. It's everywhere it's now. BDL, that's right. <laughs> Jeez, man. You know, and this is why... That's why I'm sad, man. That's why I'm sad. All right? Just do a show. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Shame. Where's the bell? Shame. 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 Okay. That's enough. You can come back. I've I've paid my penance. That was my my penance walk there. (laughs) I put my head down for 30 seconds on the stream. That was Mm -hmm. was enough. (laughs) So, hey, you can get cool stuff via the VIP system. You can also get cool stuff via... <clears throat> McFarland Toys eventually, and also GameStop eventually. McFarland Toys announced they are going to have a Psycho figure. I think those are fully articulated, and a Tiny Tina figurine. Well, I should say action figure. Okay, action figures, Psycho and Tiny Tina. And at GameStop, they're figurines of Tiny Tina, Moxie, and then a, a Borderlands 3 Echo device collectible big cool plastic thing and those i know at least the gamestop stuff it says it's pre-order coming out on the 2nd of september i believe so right around borderlands three time if you want to get in a pre-order and get some stuff to get yourself hyped to then get yourself hyped more for the game that's how you can do it mcfarland toys and gamestop keep a lookout there's gonna be more borderlands stuff coming anyway because rika confesses just tweeted out that she's Excited to show off more merchandise and more things, more opportunities for us to wear and have and own Borderlands 3 things. Wait, you soon. already have tons of stuff, so That's you're a right. Borderlands 3 fanatic, man. You've got all the goodies. I was got so the jealous. Glasses, got the cups, uh, got all the... Oh, yeah. You should have been wearing one tonight. You should have put on them glasses. They're, they're glasses like this No, glasses, not no, glasses. Just put, them, just put just one put here them. and one there. It's like a mod- I, been, it's like I was a like, mod- you have badass glasses <laughs> and you're not wearing them? How dare you, sir? I, 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 okay, you. I would totally wear them for the stream. That's okay. And I will say, I, I totally want the Moxie statue. but uh, well, Just bu- like last time. But I bought, yeah. the, I bought the Lilith statue, okay? Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. wife uh-huh. came down and went... What's this big buxom lady doing on your desk? That's ridiculous. That is ris- <laughs> and I went, she's not even the biggest lady. Oh, I probably should never <laughs> get should, Moxie. Neither is Moxie. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. You're correct. So as much as I would like having a Moxie around, because I've always loved Moxie, it was just the, the jokes around her and stuff has always been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> I remember the stories when you found the Borderlands 2 Moxie on like oh clearance. Oh my gosh. And you were like <gasps> pressed up against the glass. Yes, yeah, so like a little <laughs> yeah, like a little nine year old. I was like, oh my God. It's so beautiful. It's right there. I want it. It's only a hundred and something dollars. Uh-huh. Well, wow. that's not down from two hundred. Yeah, was, it, it was, was big, it was expensive. Statue, yeah. It was huge. It was freaking mm-hmm. crazy cool. But yeah, it was just a dream, a pipe dream. <laughs> but this one maybe will be priced a little bit lower, probably more like the the lower one they had of her. But I don't know; I haven't seen it yet. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I know the Echo device was about ninety some to a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. but I didn't click on the two figurines of the characters. To gotcha. The Mox see what is around fifty. Oh, yeah, so way bad. more affordable this time around. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> well, we'll see. We'll see. There's all sorts of cool loot coming out. Uh, I'll have to figure out what I want the most. 
You can just get like a little like a handkerchief, like an embroidered handkerchief from someplace. And when you see the wife coming, just <laughs> Etsy. Whoop, toss. <laughs> What's that? It's my handkerchief stand, baby. Look at yeah. this. It's, 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 it's got Eric Batten monogram right there. Mm-hmm. Look, you, it's yeah. so curvy. <laughs> exactly. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all we got. No. That's not all we that got. That's not it. We got, mm-hmm. we got all kinds of... Oh, actually, we have something that we didn't even talk about pre-show. I'm going to squeeze it in right here. There was a Medium article from Danny Homan talking about how you create narrative and like the collaborative or cooperative or collaborative storytelling that they do at Gearbox. Like he was talking about, oh man, you know, you're a, you're a narrative designer. You want to make a quest or a character or something and how he like gets a kernel of an idea and to like, to make this idea pop, he's got to know what the character is going to be like, who's going to say this thing. So he takes it to the character designer or the concept artist. And he was talking about how you feed, you know, he feeds them just a couple bits of info or they ask him a couple questions. They come back a few hours later with this cool, badass, fleshed out character. You take that character to the narrative designer or the quest designer and they ask a couple questions and you feed them a couple answers and everybody puts all their ideas into this cool little ball and you go to the VO guy and stuff. It was a really cool kind of behind the scenes look. I mean, a lot of stuff that we kind of know, like you would expect to hear, but it was cool seeing like how he broke down like the situations and the way you you go through even making something as simple as a quest in a game because you need a quest giver, you need a quest turner in her, you need dialogue to tell you what to do and how all those pieces came together. It was a really cool medium article. A bunch of the guys for and gals from Gearbox were tweeting it out saying, Hey, here's our buddy. He's, he wrote a cool thing is basically what most people said. So I think it might've flown a little bit under the radar, but as someone who loves behind the scenes stuff, it was a really cool read. I liked it a lot. Sweet. Nice. I totally missed it. So I'll have to go back mm-hmm. and check it out. Because like you, I love reading about that. That way I feel like I'm a little smarter on the topic of what the hell it actually takes to do something in that regard. Mm-hmm. So when I'm talking about it, I'm not just like, five seconds, let's add a thing and do this, and whatever. Pff, they're mm-hmm. idiots. And then you just get the, puh, moron. Uh, <laughs> nobody understands the struggle exactly. of how hard it is to make a thing. There you go. So now I can go, no, I read about what you had to do, and if you'd have mm-hmm. just spent... 40 more hours on it, you would have got this. It would have been nothing easy peasy. (laughs) One thing I really took away from it is, you know, he says it's really easy to write like a funny line, like one piece of dialogue. But then when you give the quest dialogue and the interactions to like the quest designers, they play through it tens and twenties and thirties and forties and hundreds of times. And he says, it's really interesting to see how that humor holds up versus, you know, you just, Oh, I wrote it down. That's really funny here put it in the game and they have to sit there and listen to what you wrote over and over and over. Is it still even remotely funny after a hundred times? That's great. Is it, does it wear out as welcome after like five? Okay. We got to, we got to work together and restructure that. So I thought that was really cool. Again, something you don't really think about unless you play through Borderlands a million times, which I, I noticed a couple times when we were playing through those last few times. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is where he does the, <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, it's, you know, we played through it a billion, billion times <laughs> and never finished it. So that's our own fault. We did it we to ourselves. It we, we finished, finished it, it enough. We never OP8. You know, geez, OP. Oh, my goodness. Who could do that? What kind of, what a kind lot of, of weird, people crazy do person? That. A lot of people. Cra- There's lots of crazy people in this world, too, there, Eric. <laughs> that's true. You're right, I guess. <laughs> Now, see, speaking of speaking, of, speaking of speaking of speaking of crazy, <laughs> I gonna, wanted to say a lot of things about. I know you did. You ain't gonna say them. We're live on the five, so you shut your gosh darn <laughs> mouth. <laughs> We're gonna move right on into a tweet from Randy Pitchford before it's forgotten, and we go over it. He yep. was out there responding to an individual who's talking about animes, cartoons, etc. And he said, hey, you know what? We've got something in the works we're looking at doing, da 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 for Duke Nukem. And then he also said it would be also interesting to work on something maybe Battleborn. I don't know. What do you guys think? And that mm-hmm. got everybody going bananas, going, oh, my God, that'd be great to see a cool cartoon, anime, something along that lines of Duke Nukem. And then especially since we follow a lot of Battleborn fans and whatnot, saw all mm-hmm. sorts of people going nuts about getting a Battleborn cartoon out there. And pre-show, I said, you know... First off, we need Nuke and Duke because we've talked about Nuke and Duke forever. Right. So (laughs) if I see that, 
I, I'm just saying. You're welcome, world. You're welcome. <laughs> we also, if I see that, you and I are getting in the yellow truck that and day. And driving to Texas. Uh-huh. We're going down, down. We're going, hey, uh-huh. where is the royalties? I have I have the show notes. <laughs> I wrote Nuke and Duke in here <laughs> have, many times. We have several shows with the title. <laughs> Yeah, several shows it's, with the title. The <laughs> uploads are dated to prove this is like when you when you write a rough draft uh-huh. of your of your novel and you send it to yourself. So the postmarks there. This yep. is this is that <laughs> exactly. So if we get that, I don't know Gearbox. I'll be happy, but we better see some props, something going on. I better see at least the Bulletstorm T-shirt. Out oh of that. my god, that Bulletstorm <laughs> T-shirt would be the best. Talking to had you, to do Joe. It. I had to do it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, my God. But I said pre-show that the freaking Battleborn one would fit right in. Because if Mm. you didn't know, in Battleborn, they already did a bunch of the uh, cartoon scenes, already had all the characters drawn up, cartoon style, anime style, whatever you want to call it. So a lot of the base work is there. And, of course, the story is already written. And so you're basically just taking that, adding on to it, and you could roll straight from there. The problem is it doesn't have the same base that Duke Nukem does. But then again, Duke Nukem, in a lot of people's eyes, is, you know, oh, it's Duke, God, he's rude and mean and abrasive and not nice. And so, whereas Battleborn has people who love trees and animals and all sorts of funny, witty characters and nature people and all this other stuff. A whole variety of crazy individuals. So it might work better with an audience. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like Battleborn's better set up for this day and age and the audience out there. But I'll still contend that Duke is such a crazy character, you can make up any kind of series about Duke. He can do anything from episode to episode. It doesn't I have agree. to be a coherent storyline. Oh, got sucked into a portal this time. Ugh. Well, I'm going <laughs> to kick some ass on this planet. I don't even understand what's going on. <laughs> and you can play it up totally cool that way. Like Maybe he gets sucked into a super PC planet, and he's still got to save the day, but everyone's against him, just like we've talked about with the first Nuke and Duke idea. But you could you could have him doing anything from episode to episode, which would be a lot of fun for the fans, and then even more fun for the animators, because you can go full on totally different animation styles, whichever one he gets pulled into. See, that would be Maybe unique, you... wouldn't it? Uh, that'd be awesome to have just yeah, different you... uh, writers and draw all, you know, all that do it. So you're getting mm-hmm. vastly different stories every single time, and uh, drawing styles and everything. That would be sweet. It'd be like the Animatrix, except with Duke Nukem. Oh, I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Man, mm-hmm. that was yeah, awesome. Me too, mm-hmm. wow. <laughs> and I love that when they did that. That was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Way better than the second and third atrocities that they made of movies. It was mm-hmm. yeah, terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Oh, but I'll tell you this. If it happens, I'll be there day one buying it. If the Battleborn yeah. one happens, I'll be flipping a lid because all of our favorite characters and voice actors, I'm assuming, would come back. That would be... Mm-hmm. Outstanding, and I saw John St. John posting. You know, he he was all for it back when they were talking about it years ago or a year ago. Mm-hmm. I don't remember when it was. So he'd be yeah. on board. So you got Duke back in your pocket, no problem. That'd be great. Yeah, because I know he just tweeted out recently. Because I, as soon as I heard the Duke Nukem series idea, I went, "What happened to that Duke movie?" And I looked and looked, and right. it was it disappeared off the face of the earth. And he even he, even he tweeted out, "Well, it looks like there's no new Duke game, no new Duke movie. I'm afraid my hero is vanishing into the ether." Mm-hmm. So uh, just from that tweet alone, you know he would be there day one, no problem. Uh, you could probably get him for for ch- pennies on the dollar. He'd be like, "Yeah, I just want to be Duke again." Because <laughs> who else am I ever? But mm-hmm. yeah, if if your main talent behind the voice and the character is super excited to do it, it's it's easy peasy. Just just do it. Just make it happen. Anima- making an animated series is super easy. Just do it. I'm just telling you right now. If SpongeBob SquarePants can stick around for 500 years and and and, and entertain <laughs> oh. children and adults, Duke Nukem can too. All right. That's true. <laughs> because God, if an atrocity of a show like that can be around, anything can succeed. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I mean, it would have to go on like either Adult Swim or Comedy Central and be like a kind of Archer show. Yeah, you could do that. Oh yeah. I mean, you could go anywhere with it. Uh-huh. Like, you get, you have Deadpool. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> if Deadpool flies nowadays, I think Duke would too. Yeah, and I and I think taking another look at it if you can have such radical redesigns of old series like ninja turtles has gone through like two or three separate redesigns people still love it even though it's all different thundercats just went through a crazy ass redesign and people love that you can take you can take duke and make duke 
look or act or f- not really act, but you know, you can take him in all kinds of different ways, different styles, and people will still eat it up because they'll remember the original and go, well, this is a really cool spin on that idea. I appreciate this. DuckTales did it too. People were just talking about how great the new DuckTales is. Same yeah. thing. Repurpose this, pra- this this old classic thing in a new way. That's that's the whole... Oh. Uh-oh. Eric's ads <laughs> broke Eric's brain. I had an idea, all right? I was inspired. Okay. Remember? In Bulletstorm, they brought Duke in. And, yeah. and they cleverly, instead of actually changing all the lines... You yeah. just throw Duke yeah, yeah. into random old cartoons, and That's you just oh my God. Hey, where the f*** am I? <laughs> that would be so awesome. You get some old like public domain like 1930s black and white cartoons, and just Duke is there now. Duke is in there, just participating, and he's confused. <laughs> That's that would be the best. Oh, every yeah. episode would be crazy. It would be like C Lab, because mm-hmm. ex- that was an old yeah, show. Old and they, show they just ma- voice over. That's it. You just have a Duke head on some character there. Oh my god, that's it. That's perfect. perfect. We did oh, it. We did it. You're welcome. We did it yet again. Whew. Throwing them ideas out. That's what we do around here. Just throw out them ideas. Million dollars. <laughs> rich. Look at this rich basement I'm in. Look at that. My million dollars. <laughs> Those wood panels. Yes. Look at this door. This Look is at that straight door solid wood. <laughs> <laughs> now it makes me wonder why we don't see more stuff like that Space Ghost Coast to Coast did it with all that old animation uh-huh. mm-hmm. C-Lab the Brack show well Brack became eh, whatever anyway Johnny Turbo you know Jeez. Mm. man <laughs> I don't even want to talk about E3 I just want to talk about old cartoons now <laughs> no we can't do that we can't do that <sighs> Oh, well. Well, one thing we can talk about, another article that got shared around all over the internet was a really good story from Gearbox about how they got a hold of a, a stage four cancer, terminal cancer patient. I believe his name was Trevor. I lost the last name. Sorry about that. But he was saying, you know, he was diagnosed with a year, maybe less than a year to live by his doctors. And he said, man, I'm a really diehard Borderlands fan. I'd really, really like to get my hands on Borderlands 3 in case, you know, I don't get to see it in the mm-hmm. rest of my lifetime. And so a bunch of devs flew out with him with the build of the game. He got to play for about four hours. He got to name his own weapon, get, get it, give it its own red flavor text. I didn't write the weapon name down. It's like the cycling Trevenator or something like that. And the flavor text was like, Trevor's going to get you. So definitely a good thing. Good good guy Gearbox here is here again doing great stuff for a you know a, a diehard fan who's also going through some very unfortunate circumstances. So good on you, Gearbox. I think that's a really cool thing to do. I I'm really impressed with the way Gearbox handles situations like this. I mean, mm. they could have just, you know, sent him a t shirt or something and just moved on. But uh-huh. they went out of their way to get him the experience that he wanted just in case he doesn't make it to the game release. So yeah. I think that's that's a really, really heartwarming story. And did they do that with Borderlands 2? Isn't there a reference to somebody in Borderlands 2 or another Gearbox game? Like, I feel like they did something like this before. They did. Um, okay. I don't remember the name, though. I mm-hmm. Killer6 and them were mentioning it and saying props to them, but I don't remember the name of the individual. But yes, okay. they have previously done this before. So they have a track record. And as Randy also tweeted out, they do it quite a bit, but they don't mention it a lot of times. They just under the yeah. radar do it because, you know, you're just doing it to do it. It isn't all for publicity. Yeah. I was going to say, it's kind of like doing Make-A-Wish stuff. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you do show that off, but a lot of times, you know, you're doing it for a good reason. Yeah. So it's not like, hey, everyone, hey, look, look at us. Look, look how cool we are. Look, we're doing nice stuff. Yeah. 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 Give us love. Exactly. So definitely props yeah, to them. I mean, Randy asked if if we wanted to see more of that. I don't want to see more of that. No. I I think it should be kept between them and the person for you know most things. Because the rare one will pop up with all you know when the people put together. They, there's a lot of individuals like Sup Motto and them were out there going, "Hey, you know this guy he's reaching out. You know, let's try to get his right. voice heard." Those will yeah. pop up once in a while, and I think that's that's good enough. You know, when Gearbox mm-hmm. helps others, let it be, like you said, let it be between them and helping out and just doing a nice thing and the right thing and and feeling good about themselves and having helped someone out. It isn't about us yeah. going, oh, yay, here are high fives and props to you, you know. Right. 
And, and I think, I mean, for one, it should be obviously up to them mm. and the person. Because, I mean, I, I know if it was me, I wouldn't want my face out there a lot. But then it's also really cool. Like, there was, uh, I think there was something in Ace Combat 5 or some other game, re- not Ace Combat 5, Ace Combat 7, or something else recently where there was a tribute to a super fan of the series. And nobody knew about it before the game came out. People just kind of found, like, this artifact or this art- piece of art somewhere in the game. And they went, hey, what's this? And the company went, oh... That's somebody who passed away during game development, mm-hmm. big fan. So it's kind of a cool unlock or it's like a, a treat for somebody like, hey, what is this? I, I, I was digging around and found this cool thing. And then you can get the story out without, again, like we've said, not that they were doing this, but sometimes, you know, people can be like, oh, they're just trying to shine a light on themselves. Well, you can do it in a, in a classy behind the scenes way. And it's it's cool for everybody. Yeah. They did something like that at the end of um, What Remains of Edith Finch, too. Whoa, don't spoil that for me. No, <laughs> I'm not spoiling anything. They're gone. I'm, I'm, but it was, it, was, it was cute. I liked it. Indeed. You can come back. You can come back, man. Okay, there, okay. There yeah. you go. It wasn't a spoiler. <laughs> you see, I'm, I know it's there now. So I have been spoiled. Exactly. So <laughs> anything's a spoiler. If you tell me the game has gameplay, that's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. I don't, I don't okay. know. Oh, dang it. There, there's people in the game. God damn it. <laughs> We're going to have to cut this short. I swear. You know, knock it off. Goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll find him and put him in the right ears again. She was. <laughs> but like you guys said, it's nice to see they did a really cool thing for that individual. And mm-hmm. he, of course, appreciated it very much. And hopefully he pulls through and gets to play the whole dang game. And who knows, maybe miraculously it'll all go away and he'll be great. And even if not, he at least got to do the one thing he wanted to do. So pretty freaking cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's it for the general news. Other than the file this one under the mm, interesting if true, although signs are pointing to true. What is it? All signs point to yes. On the on the Magic Eight Ball here, uh, yeah. we're talking about the super secret DLC for Borderlands Two. That at, I mean, even Kotaku was like, "Oh, here's exactly all the details about it on an article just today." And I went, "How can you say that if it's not there?" But right. it's, it's all there. signs point to yes. It was already up on Steam. It was already posted. All the information, hence why everybody has it. Uh, yeah. Oops, sorry, Steam did it. Oh, gosh darn. Oh, no. So that's why you see Polygon, Kotaku, IGN, and every YouTuber there is that covers Borderlands. Everybody mm. went, hey, guys, guess what? Borderlands 2 DLC, Commander Lilith, and the uh, the Fight for Sanctuary is coming out June 9th, free of charge. It is not a Headhunter DLC. It is a full-on DLC, new area, and new characters, new models, this and that, new weapons, and when I say new weapons, I mean legendary weapons, and I mean above that, rainbow rarity weapons, mm-hmm. which, from what I hear, are above legendary, so they're like super, super, super freaking cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to it, because free is free is free is free, and I get to know how the hell everything ends up getting into Borderlands 3. And the one thing you forgot to mention Uh-oh. is, well, at least according to the Kotaku mm-hmm. article... The level cap's going up to 80. Yes. So that's what, five five more levels or eight more levels? I don't know because I've never maxed out my character because I'm a scrub. What do you want from me? But you get more levels to do more fighting, more looting, more maps, more characters, more bosses, more everything. So you don't you don't just run through it once and go, okay, I did it. You run through it once and you run through it again until you get that level cap. Then you go OP8 with your awesome level cap. You get your rainbow <laughs> weapons. You're going through. You're doing all the damn things. Sean's getting a whole new yellow notepad out, filling oh, it up with scratches yeah, and checkboxes yep. and circles. And, oh, boy. Yeah, he's already got it ready. You know, he's been running around his little room like a little maniac. <laughs> trying to get everybody back on board. And then what's really cool, too, once again, assuming every detail is correct, if you're a newcomer, mm-hmm. it's going to boost you. You have the option to boost to 30. So you're going to be able to just yep. get on in there and start smoking and having a good time. You don't have to go from level one up, so you can already start off a badass. Which, again, nice. is what we said is already perfect because everyone on PS Plus, which is every reasonable human in this entire world right now, you are getting 
Borderlands 2 for free in the Handsome Collection this month. You can download it right now. Mine's downloading not as we speak because then I would screw up my internet connection. Yeah, I'm waiting until we're done too. (laughs) It's downloading now. So you can literally jump in with no experience and get level 30, boom, get all your skill points going, get all your cool stuff, and then jump straight into this if you want to. Yes. And on Steam, it's like 97% off. So you pay a couple bucks. So they want you to have this game. They want you to play this game. They want you to get it's ready. It's like three cents on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just go get it. Get it installed. Get ready. Because you know, even if you're like, well, I don't know if I'm going to play. Blah, 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 the minute every human being in the world is going, oh, I'm playing Borderlands 3, you're going to be the one moron who's not. And then you're going to be sad and silly, and you're going to go buy it, and you're going to be late to the game trying to catch up, and you're going to be angry because your friends are not going to wait for you. They're going to leave you behind because you were a moron and didn't get the game day one because you were the one guy I'm not playing. I'm going to be so hip and cool. Uh, and then realize you're dumb. So I mean, it is pretty hip and cool to do that. Like, <laughs> No, it's not. When you talk about how cool God of War is, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hip and cool. I'm going to play my indie game. You know? <laughs> Time to get a visual novel on the Vita and play that. Yeah. Oh, cool. uh. <laughs> yeah. You sure you sure got me with your coolness, guy. Damn. <laughs> it's fine. While I'm talking with all eight of these dudes and gals about how awesome this game is we're playing, you could stand in a quarter by yourself and look cool. You know two people and oh, I am one. Oh man, of them. dang it, no. <laughs> I, I can find more. You could, but you won't. <laughs> you know me and Shay. Aww. That's it. He's your monster hunter friend. <laughs> your Borderlands friend. That's true. I got Brent too. I got Brent. Yeah, Brent sort of counts. He's the one who leaves you in the dust. He though. leaves me in the dust though every time for everything we play. Yeah. He's your friend for about a week. A week. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not even that. It's like three days. Oh. <laughs> Goodness. So yes, that is all we've got this week for the Borderlands news, which, if I don't say so myself, I think that was quite a bit. I think we did good. Yeah. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of good stuff. Obviously, they're going to be at E3. They're going to be showing off Moz, some new areas, new stuff. It's going to be a great mm-hmm. time. I can't wait. Randy Varnell, all sorts of people are going to be there. I don't know if he's actually talking. I'm sure it'll probably just be pictured out there, yeah. but we'll see. Time will tell, and we'll be watching, and I cannot wait for it. Until then, though, speaking of E3, it's time to go through a few of our favorite things that might be at E3, are at E3. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with it and give Mm. you guys a little taste of what we think is coming to E3 or what we want to see or hope to see at E3. And with that, I guess we'll do a round robin, one at a time. Just You do one, I do one, Danny does one, and do a few of them until we're tired, bored, or feel happy with it. I like it. All right. (laughs) Speaking of that, Danny, we'll start off with you. What you got for us? Well, um, E3, I'm hoping I see just anything about Dragon Age. Oh, yeah. Because it's been in production for at least a year. Probably more, but it's been stopped by Anthem several times. Mm. (laughs) So I would like to see anything, even just, hey, we're working on it, even though I know they're working on it. Um, Because we got that one little, like, teaser trailer, right? With, like, kind of the drawings and the ink. Maybe even if they just flesh that out to, like, a little, like, storybook. Maybe you go through a couple pages, Mm -hmm. and then it goes, like... You close it up, shoom, Dragon Age. We'll, we'll go <laughs> further into the story next time. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be cool because they they did do a tiny teaser mm. last year, which is really cool. And I'm not going to spoil anything because I know what it is. But uh... oh, We got behind the scenes <laughs> Jones over here. Holy moly. <laughs> we, Dan, Dana's going to be starting up her Dragon Age spoiler cast here. <laughs> You go, oh, I'm Sub Daniel. Here I am. I got, got a leak oh from an God. unconfirmed source who can't name terrible i like it, it, it <laughs> i like it's it. unhealthy the amount of play that i've had in dragon age mm-hmm. i i could pretty much just live in that whole universe there mm-hmm. but yeah I, I hope that i hear anything because i really miss it i just want to go back and play all the other ones again and uh there's been rumor that it might go towards um multiplayer next time and i want to say no do not do that Mm. or i don't know what i'll do because 
I've already been saddened by Fallout, and I don't need to be saddened by Dragon Age. <laughs> yeah, attention EA and Dragon Age Bioware people. Danny does not like people. So if you just have it be a single people that is Danny, she will play the game uh-huh. and love it. Yeah, if you have to yeah. interact with other people, she will say, no, thank you. Just give me a whole open world all by myself. Mm. Just one server by myself. It's, that's that's not, fine. You can't do it. No, that's not possible. <laughs> So yeah, that's 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 what I want to see. That's mm. one of the things I want to see. <laughs> How about let's go with Eric? <laughs> All right. You know what? For the first one here, I want to go ahead and go with a little conjecture. And uh, this isn't we know Square's there big time. They've got a huge slot there, as everybody should know by now. Sony is not there. You will not <laughs> see any Sony games here. But Square has stepped up. Last year they did a whole sizzle reel thing, which kind of fell flat, was not that great. Mm -hmm. And this year, everyone's talking about they got something to prove, they're going to come back strong. And I've got one for you, all right? I've already given this one before, and as I said pre-show, I'm going to give this one again and again and again until it comes true. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Everyone says Final Fantasy 16 is going to be announced because it's been year, a couple years now since a Final Fantasy announcement. That's yes. unheard of. Final Fantasy is always announced every year. The next one after the one that was finished comes, the next one's announced. That's the way it's always been. I don't think they're gonna. I think they're taking a break from Final Fantasy, and I think it's time to get the Chrono game. It's time okay. for the okay. Chrono game. <laughs> right. They're going back to the series, and they're going to go start fresh. With a chrono game, give the Final Fantasy series a little breather and bring this beloved one back. And it's going to get everyone freaking nuts, everyone hyped. And the reason I say this is, first off, I'm just crazy and I love Chrono Trigger. I love Chrono Cross. Underappreciated game. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll say it no matter what. But the reason I believe it could happen is because they have Final Fantasy VII, the remake, coming. And that's a for sure deal. That one's got tons of gameplay already been shown. They're going to be there with it. They've already said they're going to be there with it this year, talking even more about it. So they have a Final Fantasy game for you to play and have fun with and and, and make sure that it's on your brain. So you won't forget about Final Fantasy. This is the perfect time to take one of your other beloved series and get it back into the mainstream. And then hopefully maybe you can do like the Call of Duty does and start to get like a a rotation here with like a a Chrono game, a Final Fantasy game, a Chrono game, Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm. It would be great. It would give their team a breakup, you know, so instead of always going straight from Final Fantasy to Final Fantasy, they could go between the two, which would hopefully get everybody, uh, the ideas flowing, stuff like that happening, and produce even better games than they already do. Because I loved Final Fantasy XV, but, you know, there was a lot of mixed opinions on it. (laughs) <laughs> Whatever, we're not discussing that. I'm joking to death. <laughs> so yes, that's that's my first one. As I'm really hoping to see a Chrono game out of Square this year instead of the Final Fantasy 16 that everyone's hoping for. This is purely conjecture. There's no proof of it. But there you go. What about you, Mister Matt? Well, I'm gonna go with a a. I really hope it's there this year, but I have a feeling it's not going to be, but it also could be, so I have no idea. I'm going to totally throw this out there because it was one of my big hits. I believe it was last E3. I saw it during the Xbox press conference, and my eyes opened wide, and all of our eyes opened wide. As I recall, the last night, that cyberpunk, pixel art, beautiful game, like adventure-style looking game, they they showed it off at E3, and I went, oh, my God, I might have to get an Xbox just for this, which sounds ridiculous, but it was <laughs> yeah. when I saw that trailer, it was everything I love in a video game. Like, I mean, you obviously didn't see story or action or anything, but I love those type of environments, that cyberpunk, that like, you know, future noir, because it had like the dark lighting and the stark shadows and everything. And, you know, the characters, just everything about it looked beautiful and spoke to me as a gamer as someone who consumes media and loves it and then i heard not a goddamn thing about it all year Mm -hmm. and every every couple months like i you know it just sparks in my brain i'll see like oh xbox one is on sale and i go oh yeah last night where is it and i check and it goes oh not released yet and i go okay whoo and then two months later where is it where is it where is it but so I did some hunting yesterday when I was researching for the show, and I think it was January of this year. The developer, the guy, posted, "Hey, you know, during the past year, we got the reveal at E3. We started building up the studio. We hired on more people. We moved into a new location, and then we immediately got hit with all kinds of monetary issues, licensing issues, tax issues, all kinds of things. So I believe he started in, 
either an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter or some kind of fundraising site campaign to get more funding to help solve these issues they were having. I didn't hear how that went, but I, you know, I, I scoured on the dude's Twitter and it still says he's still making, you know, the last night you going on the developer, the game developers, Twitter, they don't have much since I believe March of this year. So I'm hoping that it's still there. I mean, the most recent tweets I've seen about the game from him say, Hey, we went through a lot of stuff, but don't worry. We are still working on it. So I'm hoping that it's, you know, maybe we're still working on it, but we've gone quiet over the last couple of months because we're going to show a little bit more here at E3. Even if it's just, like we said with Danny's gameplay trailer, even if it's no announce, no announce date, no launch, no nothing, if I can yeah. see more of that game, that will make me so happy in my heart. It will grow three sizes like the Grinch. And I'll just be <laughs> like, thank God it's still here. It's not dead. And I can I can watch the trailer for like six more months. I like I like it. I can dig it. I totally forgot about myself. That was mm-hmm. one that yes, like as you said, I went oh yes, interested, huh? Mm-hmm. Then gone, disappeared. So yeah. I'm glad you just informed me because I had no idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping for good stuff. Obviously, it could be bad news bears eventually, but I want to just, just show me a spark of life out of that, and I'll. I'll chew on that for a whole nother year if I have to. So what about you, Danny? What you got next? <laughs> well, I'll continue on with the um, the Microsoft press conference. Um, there's been some rumored talk about uh, Fable 4. Okay. I know it was brought up last year in rumor talk, but <laughs> nothing confirmed. So I, I'd like to... I really hope they're going to continue with that series because that was another series that I really got into and probably almost as bad as Dragon Age. <laughs> I hope they go back to like that like that Fable 2 system where like if you farted real good, yes. you would impress somebody and they would love you because you're a good <laughs> yes. farter and you could do like crazy dance. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I got a good and story for once you're done. Sorry, stuff. sorry. Oh my God. So much fun. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just love the whole uh, Fable universe. I keep wanting to say Final Fantasy now. Mm-hmm. But it's just a, another unique twist on the RPG system mm-hmm. that I really enjoy where you can go good or bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you hate Fable, Eric? No, <laughs> he knows he knows the story I I'm going to tell us. Oh, I know the story. I have a memory that I don't like. <laughs> yes, that's the best memory. All right, let's hear it. Oh, man. What I hope they do is I hope they have en- named NPCs who have their own houses so that you, as the player, can go, oh, man, I have found this NPC named Eric. I want to buy his house. Let me sit down and make my friend Eric and his friend Matt sit there for like 35 minutes watching me make pies via a mini game so I can afford the house <laughs> yes, to buy uh-huh. Eric's house. So I go, huh, yes. hey, B, I just bought your house, B. Bought your house, B. <laughs> as you stand there in a chicken suit. Suit, making pies, chicken suit via, making pies, the QTE mini game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hours. that was great. <laughs> what a great night! That was so much fun. You know what? Nothing's more fun than having a beer with your friends and watching them make pies in a chicken suit for hours. That's a good time. <laughs> that sounds like a great way to spend your day. What was, what was it just? Are we seriously going to sit here what and drink beers doing? while he's are we making really pies? Doing this? Yeah, why am I not going home? I'm not I guess sure I can't that. just leave now, so I might as well finish this. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Mm-hmm. See, that's why we need Fable 4, so we can have more great memories like that. <laughs> so see, what we'll do is we'll get three-person streams like this. Like, oh, Danny's playing Fable, Fable 4. Oh, I found Matt and Eric's house. Hey, guys. I know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm gonna make some pies. <laughs> yeah, I played one and two. I didn't play the last one. Oh man! So, see, I think two was probably my favorite out of out of all of them. But I still like some of the mechanics in three. So it would be interesting to see where they go with it now that gaming has advanced so much since it last came out. Mm. So, and I will say that's that's an all but confirmed one. So I think, you think so? I think you're gonna get your wish. Yeah, from what I've been oh, reading, be so good. <laughs> it's not it's not like confirmed, but yeah, everyone says yeah, the rumor, what they heard of this and that, it's gonna be there. So cool. 
That'd be so awesome. So I'm excited because yeah, I I think I think Microsoft does need some RPGs. Uh, I remember oh, yeah. it was a couple years ago. They were like, "We're gonna get RPGs. We're gonna do it." And they, <laughs> I don't know, they kind of didn't. It just kind of fizzled out. They got a couple, yeah. yeah. But it, it kind of fizzled out. It didn't go the way I thought it would go. You know, I thought they were really going to ramp it up. We we're going to start seeing all the big names on there, mm. and I, mm-hmm. I just don't think it really happened. But hey, you know what? Yeah. They've got a whole bunch of developers under their belt now, so who knows what the heck yeah, they've got cooking? That's true. True. <laughs> all right, Eric. What's next for you? Well, this one's really brief, but I want to mention it. And this one also is going to be by Square, and people can fly because if you remember, they teamed up. A year or two years ago, whatever it was, right after the bullet storm shindig was done. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so now People Can Fly is are working with Square to make some unknown game. We haven't heard what it is. We haven't seen what it is. They're just making a game with Square. And I want to play it because mm-hmm. I like People Can Fly. I love what they did with you know mm-hmm. the remaster there of Bullet Storm. And I love Square. So I'm like, hmm. This could this could lean into something really good. I'm hoping for like a par- more actiony Parasite Eve or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, imagine them getting a hold of that title or a Dino Crisis. Oh, you know? that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, was that Capcom? That was Capcom. Yeah, that was Capcom. Never mind. It has to be Parasite Eve then. Sorry, I always get those two in there. And just, I don't know what the hell. Anyways, Parasite <laughs> Eve, something like that, or a new IP. I don't really care. Mm-hmm. I just like the 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 two of them teaming up and the mystery behind it of what is this game they're working on. It's just really neat to see Square having a mystery title. Mm-hmm. Under its belt still with People Can Fly there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they're up to if they reveal it. Like I said, I have no idea. I just hear that it might be something that gets talked about. So there yeah. you go. So that's a quickie from me. What about you, man? Well, I'll go with I'll go with pretty much a quickie because nothing's been confirmed or announced for it. But I, I'll preface this by saying I'm an old man. You know, I like having like physical media, especially lately. Like I jumped on the download only like, you know, the Xbox Live Arcade stuff, the everything on PSN. I love finding any games on there and downloading them to my console. But as we've seen lately, more and more of those are just going away. So if you don't have it on your console, either you, you can download it, but you can't find it in the store. Or nowadays, like with, my, with uh, Minecraft Story Mode, you can't get it at all anymore. You can't even re-download it to your console. So more and more, I'm like, man, I really love this game, even if it's something I have downloaded. Maybe I should go get the disc on sale or used or something so I have physical media of this. And who does physical media of downloaded titles better than limited run games? Now, I've heard, I don't know if they do this every year at E3, but they are going to have their own E3 event there. I think it's on the 10th for like from 10 to 11. So they're going to announce a whole bunch of titles coming up the next year. The entirety of the, of their remaining PlayStation Vita titles are going to get announced here. So I'm looking forward to see, seeing what kind of digital only games they can bring to us. And if anybody doesn't know, they don't just, you know, make the art and the cartridge and the the, the box and everything. They also do really cool collector's editions. Like they did one for the house in Feta Morgana, which I wasn't able to get because it sold out like that, but it had like a big art book, a poster, like six CD soundtrack with 99 tracks Jeez. on it. Oh, you know, collectible box. They do steel books. They do everything for these games that, you know, normally it's a five ninety nine download over here. So you pay for mm-hmm. the physical media. It's a, premium price but they do an awesome job on it so i'm excited to see what they can bring me that i can grab it in my hand and put on that little shelf over there that nobody can see (laughs) it's over there and then what kind of collector's editions they will bring to maybe games that i already love like you know something analogous to like donut county which i wasn't expecting to see a physical release from i am 8-bit did it they got the vinyl soundtrack out there too so I want to see what limited run games has. And even if it's, you know, not systems that I have right now, like they do a lot of Switch stuff too. Maybe it's stuff that I can look for in the future on eBay used, find that kind of stuff just so it, it doesn't disappear from everybody's life. I, I hate when that happens, so I'm not going to let it happen to me. And limited run games <laughs> is a cool company that does that stuff. I want to know. If I had, if I had to shoot out one, one game I, I expect they're going to do, I'm going to say Time Spinner. Because that just now came out for, I think it's PC and Xbox One. It was on Switch and PS4 and Vita. So I, I feel like a, a limited run of a couple of those would be an easy pick for them, you know, to throw out pretty recently. So if I had to, if I had to guess one, that 
but otherwise, this their whole announcement and conference is something I'm interested in. Fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> so that'll be one you're checking out, obviously, on the side thing when they're just doing gameplay and floating around because they don't well, actually, do they get a big spick here? Or? I, don't, I, well, I don't think they go up on a stage, but they mm-hmm. have like a live stream they're doing. It's oh, a press it's, it's, oh, on, it's on the schedule. So, yeah, it's, they're yeah. definitely there full, t- full on. Awesome. I must miss yeah. them every freaking time. But, mm. of course, I'm working, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I end up only being able to catch all the big ones and a couple of the minor ones that I, I know about personally. So, mm. but Yeah, I'll definitely be checking it out. What about you, Eric? You got some more stuff? Oh, I do. I do. Actually, in this one, I wanted to give a shout-out to Bethesda and id Software. All right? Because we all know that Doom Eternal's coming, and we all know that Wolfenstein Youngblood's coming. Mm. But... <laughs> They're going to be here. They're going to be showcasing a bunch of gameplay for it, all sorts of cool stuff for it. I don't know if they've got anything new they're going to be throwing out there. I don't really care because just those two titles alone, I am super stoked for. Mm. I'm getting both of them, and I can't wait to play them. I love the combat. I love this the feel of the Doom Eternal and, of course, Wolfenstein. Mm. But most importantly, the Doom one is the one I'm really just – I got a bit in my mouth for. I want back in that world – I miss that just heavy metal music and just the way it pushes you forward and just murdering those demons and just keeps you cranking and going. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> Nobody does it better than fun than them. They just they I don't know it's it's magic. It's magic how they get you in a room and have these spawn points in these perfect locations where you just keep spinning and moving and running and just killing, 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 killing. And then you move on. And then all of a sudden it just ramps back up again the music starts flowing again and you're right back in it and then it gives you that nice little crescendo that little just and then it ends and then you get to run around and get the collectibles for a few minutes and then right back to it it's it's wonderful (laughs) and we're getting my favorite storyline which is hell on earth i've read the books several times back in the day and Mm -hmm. i love hell on earth it is the best the best of the series and of course i'm hoping that the game is going to be likewise just being on earth watching the demons take over everything from what i've seen of some gameplay already they've got that wonderful robot the ai up already going we must welcome our wonderful demon friends they do not like to be called undead they just like to be called living challenged and and just coming out <laughs> awesome. with stupid over-the-top ridiculousness of course with humans <laughs> hanging and, and trails everywhere and they're all mm-hmm. dead and you're like perfect this is this is what i'm talking about (laughs) so yes and of course with wolfenstein youngblood you get to play as the two daughters and what i'm super stoked for is you get to play this one Mm co-op so me and a buddy can play together same time going through oh your match raising his hand there all right (laughs) i'm your buddy go it in and we'll be able to kill those nazis and baddies and have a fantastic time doing it i can't wait what else needs to be said great guns great lines over the top ridiculous, just like with mm. Doom Eternal. I'm on board. I cannot wait. Danny, what else can't you wait for? <laughs> well, this is one that I I was kind of surprised that I'm excited for. Um, the kind of funny showcase. Oh yeah. They're okay. they're releasing they they say they're gonna show sixty or more indie games. They do, <laughs> they do. They told you about this <laughs> last time, you guys. They did it before. Within an hour and a half. Uh (laughs) So, and I think last time, they're the ones who showed Yakuza last year, I believe. They showed Judgment. They uh, revealed Judgment, I think it was. Yeah, they're going to, I think they're going to do that this year. And I want to see more about that because I want to see more about Judgment. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Judge (laughs) Eyes. Yep. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see that. And they're not even... I found out that they're not even a game production company. Mm-mm. They are just an entertainment company that reports on games mm-hmm. and does do podcasts and all that kind of content. So that's really interesting for them to have their own little showcase in the middle of E3. Yeah, and I think it's smart from an indie developer standpoint to have somebody who has corralled up a space for indies, even if you only get 30 seconds. I mean, I'm sure I've never, obviously we've never been to E3. I'm sure there are hundreds of games we never hear about that are there yeah and so especially if you i'm a one-man developer here i am i uh spent a thousand dollars on this one little stand here with a laptop you can play my game on if you can get somebody big like that to go around and round up all these games and say hey here it is 
look how cool it is, even in just like a 30-second snippet or whatever. That gets people out there. It's an organized place where indie game lovers like me can go and be like, this is the indie game section right here. Boom. Mm -hmm. And then I can go out and follow them on Twitter and research and do all the other stuff. I think it's awesome. Right. Yeah, yeah, I would re definitely recommend you guys tune in this one because uh, Greg Miller and his team, kind of funny, they did this uh, for the Game Awards as well way back last year or whatever it was mm -hmm. and just had all sorts of indies and cool titles showcase going wham, bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. I thought it was awesome. And like you said, they're, they're content creators. A lot of them came from IGN before, mm -hmm. but now, yeah. now they're on their own. They're doing their own thing. So, yeah, they do have an extensive reach. So And they use it to help them out. And they use it to help, like you said, out a whole bunch of other people because where else are these indie developers going to get that kind of shine and attention mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. through this so they're very appreciative it's really cool what greg and his team are doing you know i'm looking forward to it because there's some awesome titles in there and plus that gives me a little head start so i understand what the hell matt's even talking about with some of the stuff he says so I'm like, <laughs> exactly like, oh, okay. thing with a guy I, I, I was yeah, saying yeah. i saw two images and a thing with it at least i know what he's talking about uh. all right <laughs> All right, so Matt, what's next? Well, I'm going pie in the sky on this one. This is one we talked about right before the show, and I said I was going to write it down because I had such great ideas and cool ideas, so I wrote a big P5R, Persona 5 Royal. <laughs> Obviously, there's no way it's going to be at E3 because they just had a big announcement and release and info dump in Japan all about like the collector's edition they're getting there, more videos and screenshots of the new characters and the new events and the new, all the new stuff. But I'm going to say, bring that shit to E3 too so I can see it and also have details on an American collector's edition right now because, I mean, they announced the <laughs> Catherine full body collector's edition like almost a year before the game dropped, at least like nine months. I think it was back in January, December that they announced that. Uh -huh. So, why not announce this one right here now? And like I said, have a reverse Morgana alarm clock that you put in the time you want to go to bed and it pops up with Morgana's voice saying, hey, like aren't you tired? It's time to go to bed. <laughs> I would follow that. I would follow that alarm clock. I set an alarm on my phone. It says time really to brush your teeth it. and go to bed. And I don't ever, I ignore that because it doesn't sound like Morgana. Yeah. I almost because threw it. I'm not going to throw it. I'm not going to want to break it. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's just pretty much every night I sit here playing a game or screwing around and mm -hmm. 10 30 hits and i'm supposed to go to bed and i just sit here and i mm -hmm. go yeah 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 one more one more <laughs> <In a> minute <laughs> oh it's 11 <sighs> oh it's 11 30 oh god okay now, now tomorrow's gonna suck great if i had morgana telling me hey eric hey go to bed hey you can't play one more round gotta stop yeah perfect i'd stop because i'd be angry Cause, Cause, it would be so cool. Because if you had the snooze, it would get progressively like more bossy. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, aren't you tired? Yeah. It's we should probably hit the hay. Uh, snooze. Hey, look, you're really getting tired. You really need to go to bed. Snooze. All right, it's time to go to bed. The Phantom thieves are going to be all exhausted tomorrow. You know, some kind of in-game reference for fans yeah. to just be like, all right, cool, yeah. But I, I don't know. It's just something. I want a big box collector's edition of that with figurines and soundtracks and steel books and posters and art things. And I want to see that at E3, even though I know I know I'm not gonna be there. Be there, Atlas. Do it for me. Do it for Matt. <laughs> what about you, Eric? All right. So I've got two more total that I'm going to go through tonight. And this one I'm going to do a realistic one because I already know it's there. And no one's mentioned it yet. I thought for sure one of you were going to mention it. So I was not going to do it. But you know what? I can't let this not go. Okay? Okay. Cyberpunk 2077. That's on a CD list. CD Project Red. Okay. Yeah. Shoo, somebody was going to get there. I'm like, goodness gracious. Nobody <laughs> said anything the last yet. Page. <laughs> oh, my God. This is insane. <laughs> this title doesn't really need to be talked about that much. It is amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's from the folks who did Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. It's going to be gold. They showcased last time around was the Game Awards. They did uh, the, yeah. the behind the the behind the scenes 40 minutes of gameplay or whatever that they later released for you know us normal peons to see and look at. Mm -hmm. And then they, of course, had that really cool trailer, and everyone got super jazzed about it. And then they really haven't heard much about it since. At least I haven't, but I don't follow it like super close. Yeah. But... They're going to be there. They are going to be showing Cyberpunk 2077. I expect to see a whole bunch more gameplay. Probably another really cool snazzy trailer showcasing some middle ground stuff or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I just want to eat it up. I hope to see some more of the actual uh, minutia. The you know just 
moment to moment gameplay mm-hmm. where you're going to be what you're going to actually be doing on uh, most of the time not just the cool fun shoot 'em up parts mm-hmm. and where the grinding comes in i want to see some of that i'm hoping they uh, let us get a glimpse and a lot of really good playthrough stuff so i can see a lot of the streamers doing their own thing and get a spin on what i'm going to enjoy based mm-hmm. off what my favorite streamers the ones that do what i would do kind of play as so hopefully there's that hopefully that's what we see i don't know time will tell i just know they'll be there now, this is another one that I'm kind of torn on. Like, I almost wrote Death Stranding here, but I'm in total media blackout on it. I'm almost to that way of Cyberpunk 2077 because I feel like that that 40 to 60 minute gameplay drop dropped like way too soon. Like you said before, we saw any real story or bits or you know information about what you're actually going to do throughout the game. So I almost feel like I want to just be like, I want to know more, but I don't want to see a lot. So I'm kind of I'm kind of in that thing like I I want to I want to I want like I want a release date I want to know more about that, but I don't want to know too much because I feel like no I, I'm, I'm a weird guy if I no, if so I know too really much weird. <laughs> if I know too much about it beforehand I feel like I won't enjoy it as much like well here's the first hour of gameplay well if I watch that then the first hour I'm just gonna go oh yeah here's where the, it comes through the wall yeah okay. Mm-hmm. You see, you know what I mean, but yeah, I I agree. I'm sure it's going to be awesome because I trust CD Projekt Red like nobody else. But I I want it to be there so there's more stuff. So if I decide to see more, then I can see more. How's that? <laughs> I'm spoiler Jones, so you know, for yeah, me, I know. I'm I don't understand. Like when you talk about like I want to be vague, and I'm like blah blah. I don't know what he wants. I don't care. Well, I know I the ending already. I know the ending. The I watched the whole thing. <laughs> I just enjoy playing my own playthrough, even though I know yeah. the beats. I just like my the minutia of it. I love the grind, getting my own thing up. So you know, but I do respect. I understand where you're coming from. I get mm. it, but. Just for me, I I, I got to know more. I just want to eat it. I just want to eat it. I can't eat every little detail. <laughs> so all good. And it also saves me sometimes because there's a lot of games where I think I'm going to love it. Now I'm like, I'm True. on board 100%. And then I watch like four or five hours of gameplay, start getting some of the story beats, and I go, eh, I can just, I can just watch and play this. I don't, I didn't need this game. And I think that's maybe why I didn't. I kind of got into media blackout mode on that gameplay reveal that they did because, I mean, it was a lot of shooting and action stuff, but it looked at that point to me like really floaty, like not very impactful, like kind of like Deus Ex kind of shooting. And I went, oh, I don't really want to watch a lot of that because it's going to sour me on it. So even though it's going to get better as they develop it more for another full year, I don't want to have that, that like sour thoughts mm. in my memory. I want to see it once it's, a plus Duke Polished. of New York, A number one. Yeah, exactly. I have nothing on this nothing? one. Nothing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Lame. I mean, it, it looked cool when... I, I, the only thing I remember is just the neon colors, and it's just bright and in darkness at the same time. That's not your jam. No. That's she, all you gotta know. <laughs> she's dark. <laughs> she, she, oh she's dark. God, she's dark punk. fantasy. Neon dark <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> she don't want neon. They flying cars. Oh, <laughs> cybernetic implants she doesn't want cyber (laughs) blade runner poo puke i'm not i almost said something i'm not gonna say it (laughs) (laughs) i like sci-fi stuff but i don't know that i'm like totally sold on it i probably do have to see a little bit more but that's all i remember of it i haven't actually gone and sought out the gameplay that you guys have talked about or anything like that so gotcha maybe seeing something this year will draw me in a little bit well, more fine you don't care about it but you know what hey i'm throwing it to you <laughs> what do you care about danny what's going on what here? do i care about mm-hmm. okay so this is a weird one that i came across last month um is the dark pictures man of medan mm-hmm. and it's a horror uh kind of i don't uh, murder mystery kind of choose your own adventure kind of game mm-hmm. and i really want to stream it because i think it'll be funny to see my reactions to it because i don't like playing horror games or watching horror flicks mm-hmm. But for some reason, this really interested me. So <laughs> I want to see more about it. And they're going to have a mini presentation about it during E3. So I want to learn more. Cool. I haven't heard a single word on that game. So I'm in the dark. <laughs> I know. It came out of nowhere. 
<laughs> well, I, I I know I saw at least a reveal trailer for it, and and if you don't know anything about it, like at all, Eric, uh-huh. it's it's like the follow up from the Until Dawn guys. Oh no, duh! It's on the ship, duh. Okay, yeah, 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 I, yeah, see yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be. A, I oh, never mind. I know what you're talking about now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's I no way Eric doesn't that. know. He just yes. doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I just didn't know yeah, what the title yeah, yeah. was. Yeah, they're on the ship. It's going to be a shorter a shorter experience, but there's going to be way more, they said, choices and endings slash just diversity in the uh, the plot lines. Yeah. And it's supposed to yeah, be they, terrifying. They said there's, you can, there's a possibility of keeping everyone alive. That was the same with Until there's Dawn. There's also a possibility mm-hmm. of... Everyone dead. Yeah, everyone dying. Yep. So that'll be... It'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm on board. Never mind. Yeah, I'll be playing this. I played Until Dawn and beat it. And uh, I'm proud that I only had two individuals die. And they were both idiots. And they deserved the death. So, although I will say one of them, I was really hoping to keep alive. But because I'm a moron, I pushed the wrong button. Not once, but twice. Shameful. And then they died. Oh, God. I'm sure that's going to happen. They fell into a grinder. And I felt sad as I watched their body turn into pulp, and I went, "I didn't, oh I didn't mean for that, but it happened." Uh huh. So this is like when I was picking my game of the years, and I highlighted the wrong one. That was you. You <laughs> meant to kill him. You just didn't know it. Your I body wanted him yeah. dead. Your exactly. Heart, my your finger is, did it. Yeah. <laughs> because early on, I did. I wanted this individual dead. And I was like, when their turn comes, well, I'll murder them. But then as the story progressed, they just kept surviving. And then I kept hearing more about why they were the way they were and what was going on. And I went, ah, oh, they're not that bad. That's okay. And then the last moment came and I, f- I fudged it and they died. I went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but that's okay. Whatever. Oh, it was God. a great game. I enjoyed it. It did have a lot of cool scares, a lot of tense moments. I expect the same yeah. from this one. So I yeah. won't stream that one, but I will play that one. So it's all on you, Danny. You stream it. You have fun. Okay, it'll be fun because I I always play at night. So that's true. <laughs> so when your cat jumps funny. up and knocks over your whole streaming yeah, setup, you go, oh my god, <laughs> it's gonna scare the crap out of me. I, I look I look forward to going, Danny. Is this person alive? <laughs> no. No. I panicked. You guys are going to send me texts while I'm playing. That's exactly oh my it. God, when is ramping up, you're like, whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, man. Here comes Matt. Oh, man. No. Uh-huh. Because it's, yours is Monokuma. Oh, happen. my God. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Matt, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff that I don't really either know anything about or it's been... It's been, I've been spoiled that it's not even going to be there, so I'm going to run through a couple of quick hits. <laughs> the only thing I want to know about from Ubisoft is freaking Skull and Bones, but it's been pushed back to after March of 2020. Eric says, oh, there's no way they're going to be there. They're so. not going to be there. Sorry, Matt. So sigh, sad face for me. I do want to know more about Jedi Fallen Order, because if there's oh, a yes. good Star Wars game out there, I want to know more about mm-hmm. it. Obviously, I know nothing, so tell me more. Devolver Digital, one of my favorite publishers, they always do weird, crazy events and press conferences. I want to, I want to see that a, and then I want to know more upcoming titles that they have because I know, if, if I follow them on Twitter and like every couple months there's something new, something new, something new. So I feel like this, I, I saw Danny's little write up of what was rumored to be there, and it's like Katana Zero and Ape Out, and something else that's already out. I'm like, they're not just going to bring old games out. No way. So I want to see what's in their little bag of tricks. But then the, the other thing I saw, and I didn't think about it. I hadn't heard about it or anything on your little write up was it was rumored that a near automata sequel was going to be at here revealed or teased or looked at or whatever. And I went, I I literally wrote here, no way. Cause you can't make a sequel (laughs) to that game. Based on what I saw, you can't do it. I mean, you uh-huh. could, but it'd have to be totally different, totally weird. But then it got me thinking. I was like, man, anything from Yoko Taro, who did the original Nier and Nier Automata, I want to know more about. That will be the thing that gets me maybe like to actually dive in and see every trailer, know everything. Because he's another one of those... I, I'd almost put his story level on the level with... Hideo Kojima, where there's twists and oh, weird wow. things, and there's so much more underneath what you think is actually happening. But then the fact that, if anybody watched my near streams, like the gameplay itself also subverts your expectations uh. and turns what you think is happening, even under the surface, also on its head. 
if he has something new, even if it's just a tease, even if it's just one screen, a still screen that just says from Yoko Taro, we're going to be working on bleh. I want to know all about it. And I will get so hyped. I'll jump out of my chair and throw my phone against the wall. Anything by him. Now that I've been through near automata, I will be super hyped for. So if it's, if it is a sequel, if it's a brand new IP, if it's on any kind of system, I don't have, I want to know about it. So that rumor got me super excited because my brain just went in all kinds of different directions on what you could do. <laughs> well, I hope to make you more excited, Matt. It's a strong rumor that mm-hmm. they're going to be there. It's, it's yeah. not a weak rumor, so you got a yeah. pretty decent chance of seeing something. Oh, so, boy. Now I'm getting excited for E3, <laughs> man. As they would say, I hope you are happy. I hope you find <laughs> whatever. Please enjoy it. Please <laughs> enjoy it. Please be excited. <laughs> Well, I will definitely be excited. What about you, Eric? What else are you excited for? All right. So I got to do this little little stint here, too. The Devolver Digital, yes, I was going to bring mm-hmm. that up, too. I love their whole little murder on Tombla thing going that every year. The, yeah. the, just the ridiculousness of it. I enjoy it. I love it. I crave it. I want it. I will be tuning in 100% for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got the Jedi Fallen Order, which you mentioned. I'm super yep. pumped to see some gameplay of that, what they're doing with that whole shtick. Oh gosh, there's all sorts of like middle stuff. Oh, Ubisoft and you know they said they had like three unannounced titles that they're going to be showcasing there. I'm hoping to see a Mario and Rabbids uh, part two. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's been kind of rumor milled about a little bit. I'm hoping that's part of the whole shtick. I've already covered a lot of Square. I haven't really heard much from Capcom, so I'm I'm kind of wondering where they're at. I'm mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's because they they've really understood that the uh, the masses love their old games and that they're finally gonna get yes do Matt it. don't do yeah, it I'm gonna this is do what it. I was shaking Let's my head about <laughs> first because I knew it was coming I knew it was so coming. they're gonna go ahead and announce a new Breath of Fire yeah no they're Can't doing do it Rick. this is like fantasy land you live in pal no way never uh, again it's dead it's no, dead it's and not buried dead. and then dragged dead. up and then also put mm-hmm. in the incinerator mm-hmm. and flew away no. And you see, they're going to be at the Microsoft, and this is perfect. Here's why it's coming, Matt. There you go. Because they're going to be at the Microsoft's uh, little whole shindig, because Microsoft's finally going to start making good on that RPG promise. So they're going to get all a Fable. Get they're going to get Breath of Fire in there. Oh, yeah. They're going to finally get some Tales <laughs> games coming. You know, they already do, but you know what I mean. They're going to get them. Yeah. They're going to yeah. showcase whatever the next Tales game is or iteration of that is. And they're going to say, see, everybody, look at this. There's three, four RPGs coming. Microsoft does RPG suckers it's like happening it. and Capcom knows they said this is pure money look what Resident Evil's doing for him and speaking of Resident Evil you know lessons have been learned EA has been watching and they're like oh man you know here's a big shocker yes yes man this okay pipe dream fantasy survival man. <laughs> survival <laughs> horror games everyone's I mean Resident Evil 2 the remake of that just freaking sold gangbusters it made them bajillions of dollars EA's not gonna let bajillions of dollars go away they've got a <laughs> franchise that made them a bajillion of dollars and can again and that's Dead Space everybody we're getting a remaster remake whatever you want to call it of okay. Dead Space it's coming it ain't even a lot of work. They just got to clean the graphics up, sharpen up some of the sound, da 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 and everyone's back on board. It's coming. It's here. I, I guarantee you. See, guarantee. I, I, thought you were, I thought you were going completely over the edge of the bridge, but I went, well, if he, if he dials it back to remaster, mm-hmm. that I could see. Yeah, we're not because, getting a new one yet. No, yeah. they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna <laughs> put their toe in the water by just, like I said, cleaning up something that already exists and then they're seeing gonna, if everybody eats it. They're going to blow the dust off. I guess we have all this tech and yep. stuff. We could just, uh, here, just shine it up, Billy. All right, cool. Hey, billions oh, of dollars, nom, millions nom, of nom, dollars. Nom. And, they, and then they see the millions of dollars, they'll go ahead and throw a few of it towards actually maybe starting up a fresh new one, mm. which may or may not be good because they re- obviously the original team's long gone. But You could do the Wii game in VR now. You could do that, even just clean that up. Oh, my that gosh. Up. That would be really cool because that was a fun game. And mm-hmm. it was, you know, one another so under underappreciated one. Yeah, a little light gun rail shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget what it was called. Dead Space. I played it and beat it. I owned it. Was Whatever. it Extraction? Extraction like or that. Annihilation. One of those two. Something like that. Something with an un. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It was a light, it was a little rail, you know, on rails, shoot them up. Fun mm-hmm. times. Great with the Wii. That would be another great one for VR. You're right. That's 100% yeah. true story right there. There we hmm. go. 
bam, tie that right in. They're going to release that in the Dead Space, watch it make millions of dollars on both different platforms, and then we'll get the new Dead Space. And then all of a sudden we'll get some new movies, some new animes, and I'll be right back inside <laughs> of my Dead Space world, oh, living my best life. Oh. And but then that's you get the it. good headphones oh. so you can just hear the creepy crawlies crawling around Ooh. inside your own head. It'll be so good with them Astros on, just boom, mm-hmm. freaking out. Yeah, it's going to be freaking oh, yeah. fantastic. So that's it for me. I'm sure there's a bunch that I'm missing, but I'm going to stop there. So you know what, Danny, what you got? Uh, I'm going to triple down on the Devolver Digital. <laughs> nice. As we should. Um, they did say that they are releasing four games, revealing four games, I guess I should oh, say. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one of them is going to be an instant release, and one of them is, uh, it costs $5,000. Mm, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm down. And they said, <laughs> they said it, it would be clear when, once they show it, which I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> Five thousand dollars. It's going to be price. glorious. I, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, I, I I will say I'm on their Discord, and so like two minutes uh, before the show, I went. I wonder if they put anything. Boop. They have an, a channel called E3 Leaks, and I went. Oh yeah. Click. Oh, we'll be dropping an instant <laughs> announce game. We'll be dropping three other announcing three other ones. I went. Oh yeah. And I instantly did not write it down because I'm a buffoon. And now it's like three hours later, so I've totally forgotten. But mm-hmm. yes, right. you're right because they specifically <laughs> said it right there on the other side of the screen over there. Well, I uh, another thing that I, I saw from them was uh, my friend Pedro. Yeah, yeah. With the banana. Uh-huh. <laughs> I totally forgot about that game, and I think it. Uh, I I want to see more of mm. it, <laughs> and I, I it's got to be coming out soon, right? I'm pretty sure it's right around the corner. You'd, yeah, you'd think so. <clears throat> um, and then Metal Wolf Chaos. Did you see the premise for this thing? Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the president in a mech suit. <laughs> I like it. I like it already, as he should be. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just fighting against the VP. Okay, I can take so, it. So uh, it just, oh my god, it just looked hilarious and just, uh, Devolver Digital is hilarious I was going to say, general, everything so they do I can't, is ridiculous. I can't wait to see their, yeah, yeah their whole presentation is going to be awesome. And, and I, what what I really like about them is they go from the ridiculous end of the spectrum to the, like, actually intense and interesting one. Because, like, they've, uh-huh. they've dropped, you know, Hotline Miami type stuff. They've dropped silly stuff. My friend Pedro is coming out in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But they also published observation which is stylish and oh, you know yeah. sci-fi beautiful graphics and thrilling and intense and interesting and all those old school sci-fi ways so they can go cartoony silly nonsense and then they can also i mean they obviously don't develop games they publish a lot of games but they also are behind or their name is on a lot of really serious stuff too and then i guess my honorable mention would be there's a game called sky from that game company Okay. That looks really interesting. It's classed as a global social adventure. Okay. So this one you're actually working with people you know or people across the ether that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And you actually have to work together to figure out puzzles, solve puzzles. And it was just like a really, I don't know, like you're, you're trying to spread community throughout the world mm. in order to make your way through this game. So I thought that was just a really cool idea. Mm. And sadly it's coming out on Apple products first and I don't have any Apple products yeah. <laughs> but it wow. said so... other platforms coming soon so <sighs> if it comes out on all the regular stuff I'm going to be right on this mm. game because it just it looks really cool. Cool, cool. So yeah, I think I think that's that covers everything that I'm looking forward to <laughs> about you. <laughs> well, that that I, I already talked about everything I wrote down. So I'm going to talk about one more game that we just got a big chunk out of that I refuse to watch any, any details on. More Death Stranding stuff, more Kojima stuff out in the world. <laughs> you know, all I want, all I want, I don't want to see anything else other than Hideo Kojima walking out on stage with the baby in the jar that's coming in the collector's edition. That I want to see more of. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't, it's, it, this w- it went through the same thing with Metal Gear Solid. Like, I watched the reveal trailers, and then when it got to be like, hey, here's, we're going to show off a character from the game, and I went, nope, 
total blackout, don't tell me anything. So when they just went, hey, look, here's actual gameplay in a big 10-minute trailer thing, I went, nope, don't show me that. Show me the physical object that I'm going to get. Show me the baby in the jar that I'm going to be able to hold <laughs> and put on my desk right here so every time we close the show, I go, ooh, like that. Show me that. I want to see that. Show me the collector's edition. Have it hands-on with somebody. Obviously, they have it all mocked up. Maybe they have a prototype that they bring out to whoever. Just, you know, I'm doing. Mm-hmm. we're doing the interviews. Hey, look, boom, somebody's coming over. It doesn't even have to be Hideo himself. Somebody's coming over with it to open up the case, show you the cool things. Let me see that. I'm, I'm not going to watch any story stuff. I'm not going to see a trailer. No, you need no. to stop. There's no more <laughs> Death Stranding for you. you. I can't talk to you about Death Stranding. Nope. There's nothing. Why even bother? Just no more. You, you can talk to me Death, in like Death Stranding six when it months. comes out. You can tell, <laughs> so you can no, six you don't months. need to see no more physical content. You need to see nothing. You don't want to see nothing. You don't want to watch nothing. No more. Kojima is dead to you until it comes out. Well, see, I I wanted to. Say, I, I wasn't going to mention it at all. And then Danny went, "What's it? What's next?" And I didn't want to be like, "Nothing. nothing. See you later." So I had to mention <laughs> something. Oh <laughs> and my I, goodness! I can't go in E3 without saying Death Stranding because every time we do a a show wrap up, a show preview, of what you're looking for next Talk year, about all I say is Death bottles. Stranding. Mm-hmm. Death Stranding, yeah. baby in a jar. Give it to me. I gotta see it. Except I won't look at it if it's in game. Don't and you? Don't go where he won't be there. So you're gold. No more Good. Death Stranding. It's, it's all Good. right. But you'll you'll accept Norman Reedus coming out on stage in full dress with a baby in a jar right on him. Right? He won't that. be there That's... either. So okay. you're good. Okay. Not getting him either. <laughs> well, yeah, Norman Reedus be won't so be cool. there, but Sam will be there. <laughs> with <laughs> BB eight oh seven, whatever the battle. Sam is. Bridges, thank you very much. Okay. Oh, spoiler alert! Don't talk to me about that. Your <laughs> phone just came out. No way. Don't tell me his last name. Oh no. You can't tell me that he wears shoes. Don't tell me that. Uh, oh, my God. That brings thing. it all together. Bridges. Yeah. Shh, don't tell him anything. He <laughs> no. Doesn't know. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> he doesn't want to know. <laughs> I put my earphones back in. You I just say that. to shut up. Uh-huh. All right. So I will go ahead, unless Danny's got more, I will just say one last thing for E3 for myself, which is I won't go long on it. Boulder's Gate 3 got announced. It was uh, it got revealed on the Stadia stream earlier today, which showcased all what Google Stadia is up to. It's gonna be like nine ninety nine, ten bucks a month. You still have to buy the games, but then they offer obviously all the back end for you, so you'll just stream them. They got all the high tech computers for you. It's like one hundred twenty nine dollars if you want their pro services. And you get a free game, I think, on a semi-monthly basis with the pro subscription. Yes. With Otherwise, the pro you can buy the games yeah. and yeah. stream them for free. The audience is divided. A lot of individuals are really upset about it, saying, why would I buy some crappy thing that I don't ever own? Because in the, in the wording, it does tell you if Stadia leaves, you don't get to keep any of those games you buy anymore, which that is extremely dangerous. And I understand that point. And then the other side is like, that's freaking crazy cool. I'm going to be able to buy these games, play them on my freaking uh, my tablets, my laptops, anywhere I am. I plug it in a controller and I'm going. I see ups and downs of it. I'm going to be on the fence. I'll watch it. I'm too poor to really afford this kind of stuff anyway. But they do have all sorts of people backing them already. You're going to be seeing Tomb Raider on there. Like I said, you got Destiny 2 on there. Boulder's Gate 3 is going to be on there. Division 2 is on there. Lots of cool games. Assassin's Creed, obviously. Odyssey. And many, 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 many others. But I just wanted to make sure that I did mention Boulder's Gate 3 people. Holy crap, it's been forever since there's been a Boulder's Gate. And that's all some of my nerdy friends who have no lives play still to this day is the Uh old school Boulder's Gate. They won't move on. They live in this old, old early 90s world. And it it kills me. (laughs) It makes me sad. Now they can come forward to the future and be with the rest of us. I, I look forward to it. I'll play it myself and get through it. So hopefully they're here at E3 and they showcase some more gameplay and what they're up to here. We just saw a really cool cinematic. That's all we saw with the reveal. Hopefully we get more. And, of course, my Destiny 2, blah, 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 blah. They're on their own. It'll be interesting to see what they're up to. But that's it for me. That's all the things I got for you guys here today. If any of you have <laughs> any last things, now's the time to say. Otherwise, this is where we start to wrap up. I do have one awesome. more thing I would like to I say. It. I, saw the, I saw the twinkle. <laughs> I like overall with all of the companies, I'm just really happy to see that they're starting to come together and 
do like cross platforming and coming up with all these new streaming services like Netflix for games. I just think that's really cool. I, I want to see more from everyone. <laughs> Sony's still resisting. That's the only downfall. I know. But you just got there... cross play for all your Destiny stuff. Uh, Sony's Sony yeah. still pending. Sony is still like yeah. It says right in little star like says Sony is still pending. Last last thing yeah. I heard was it they were up to the borderline and then they said okay right okay. before the announcement. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, that'll okay. be good. I mean, well, they have no choice really. I mean, mm. it, I know everybody's right? getting it. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's playing nice with each other. If they're the only mm. ones not, then obviously they're going to stand in a corner and look like fools. So mm. they've kind yeah. of been forced into yeah. it, which is fantastic, like Danny said. I, I'm super stoked about Cross Save and then taking my game from PC back to PlayStation, PlayStation back to PC. You know, I, I yeah. don't know. Unless someone buys me the new Xbox, I probably won't be able to get that one. So I'm sorry. It just gives you the flexibility just to play your games from mm-hmm. anywhere. Mm-hmm. And with anybody. Which is great. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So... I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm excited because we did it, everybody. We got through a freaking wonderful show tonight. It's mm-hmm. been a crazy time. It's been a very long show. It is way past bedtime. This is yes, ridiculous. Is. I am exhausted. <laughs> Matt, you're going to be dead tomorrow. Danny, you will <laughs> be alive doing something tomorrow, like editing this long, like long two-hour long show. Yeah. show yeah. I'm going to be a zombie. Uh-huh. So good luck, you know. But I think we need to wrap it up and get out of here, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. I definitely agree. So what do you guys think out there in the Twitch land right now? It, we're almost going to be gone, so you can't even put it in the chat. But what you can do is put it in an email to info at thirdshift.me. You can put it in a tweet at thirdshift.me, and you can put it in a Facebook, whatever that is. Find us on Facebook on the Third Shift. That's where we are. You can find us. I swear to God we're still there. I'm we not, do we still are. exist. Gosh bless it. There are tons of people over there <laughs> liking the posts, looking at them, doing all sorts of stuff. It's nifty. You know what else is nifty? We have a wonderful Patreon out there. We treat it just like a tip jar. Like what you hear, like what we're doing over here. Consider hanging over there, giving us a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, a thousand dollars. Or, as we mentioned earlier, everybody listening, that coveted one million dollars, in which case we will stop what we're doing. We will cancel our lives. We will mm-hmm. buy a food line and we will open that store and we will run it and we will have an aisle committed to babies in jars. And, and you this will be able to point. come by them. Mm-hmm. This is the point in six months where I can grab the baby in the jar for my and my Destiny it. Collector's Edition and be like, look <laughs> this. So imagine me holding the baby in a jar. They were like, whoa, yeah. It's going to be glorious. This, right now. this long con joke is going to pay off. That's right. Yes, it is. It's, it's coming. It's coming, everybody. All right? If you cannot support us financially because you got to pay bills, you got to go pay off the uh, assassin who was sent to kill you and your family, I understand. You got to do what you got to do. You can, mm-hmm. however, support us in many other ways, such as Facebook likes, five stars on the iTunes, and other such devices and podcast things. You can also go over to the Twitter and support us there. Follow us on that. Go to Twitch. Hey, give us a subscription. Throw us a Amazon Prime or just a regular subscription with four dollars ninety nine cents. But that's spending money, which is what you can't do because you have to pay off that assassin. But you can <laughs> support us in many other ways. And I suggest you do so because it makes my eyes glow brighter and be a little balder and be happier. It's a fantastic thing. <laughs> and of course, hey, uh, uh, shout out, shout out to Armenia. We we see you guys. That's, That's right, right, my Armenia bros. <laughs> you're right here. You're right here in, in our heart, hearts, everybody. In our hearts. Mm-hmm. We love you over there. <laughs> And so, all my Armenia bros, you can make sure to catch the next episode. We'll be back in your ear holes on the 14th of June for that very next episode. You can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, comments, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. And hey, now's the time for you to shine, Danny. What? How can people follow you? How can people catch you? Tell them all your socials. Tell them your address so they can send you fan mail. Tell them your <laughs> phone number so they can call you up and say, Miss Danny, I would like to play that weird game with you. I'm going to send you an Apple Eye device so we can team up together and solve oh puzzles and save the world. And or they'll just call you in the middle of your creepy stream and like breathe. And <laughs> I'm right behind you. I'm yeah, right I'm outside. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that can happen because I had a guy send me like a link. He said, hey, come check out my stuff and we'll be friends. And I was like, oh, man, it's real crazy. 
So it could happen to you too, Danny. Get ready. So tell tell yeah, us all it, that stuff, how to make sure that happen, happen for someday. you, Danny. <laughs> well, you can follow me on Twitter at uskoy84. And that's pretty much where I am all the time. And if uh, I'm anywhere else, uh, it's under the desk, sucking my thumb, huh? <laughs> wishing the world would end. <laughs> cool. That's good. <laughs> Sounds kind of like super villainy, like yeah. praying for the world to end. It does. Uh-huh. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Teach their own. That's what I say. Yep. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I have to respect your super villainous choices, Danny. Even though I may not support them, I appreciate it. You, uh-huh. I mean, I may not agree with them. You have my support. I have to support. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I got it. I salvaged it. I am PC in this day and age. You can't stop me. But I'm going to stop myself before I say something really bad live here on the fives on the Twitch. Unless anybody else has got anything else for third shift. I'm Matt. He's Eric. She's Danny. She's going to make it sound even better later. She's going to cut all that crap out because that was really stupid. <laughs> But until next time, there's nothing else to say but don't forget to say. Don't forget to say. Shut up and sit down. Aruga. I like it. Aruga. Ridiculous.